Hey, I'm Rebecca Marchburn, the head of the Uncommon community at Common Room. If you'd like to connect with 1500 other community and DevRel builders who are actively talking about how to improve their strategies and ways of connecting with their members to build better experiences and deliver business impact, you can join us on our Uncommon community Slack or find us at www.commonroom.io slash uncommon. Last year, I presented a couple of talks around seeding our champions program at Common Room through Uncommon and using our own tool, Common Room. So it's not quite yet a champions pro program full fledged, but it is about seeding that champions program or ambassador program, if that's what you call it. So we'd like to talk about that here. I'd like to show you here what I discussed um, last year in a couple of community events, uh, both the community roundtable, thanks to y'all for hosting, and at DevRelCon. That way, all of you can access the information that we shared there. So hello there, a quick intro. As I said, I am the head of community at Common Room, Rebecca Marshburn. Our community is called Uncommon and we'd love to see you there and host you in the conversation. What is Common Room you ask? Well, we are an intelligent community growth platform that helps you build better products and experiences and step with your community. So what we do is we unify data from all of your community channels. Maybe that's Discord or Discourse or Slack or GitHub or skill jar reddit stack overflow twitter linkedin your product usage data like snowflake your crms like hubspot and salesforce all these different ways that people are interacting with you maybe they're asking you questions on um, stack overflow maybe they're connecting with you through bevy and meetup all these separate ways that people are trying to interact with your brand we reunify all of that data we run intelligence on it to surface insights and help you prioritize actions. And then we give you the tools to take that action, triage and prioritize your work and understand what impact your work is having. So you can tie a direct one-to-one -one relationship between what work you're doing with and in your community and developer relations teams directly back to how that's influencing and impacting your business positively. But where were we? We were talking about seeding champions programs, and I'd like to take the next 12 minutes to talk to you about how we seeded our future champions program at Common Room. So just to make sure we are all on the same page, what is a champions program or ambassador program as well? Um, heroes program, some call it uh, friends of programs, others call it. So a lot of names for this, but in general, what I'm describing as a champions program, AKA some of those other um, labels that we talked about were four main ways. So to get us all on the same page, I um, talk to a lot of community leaders and I also research on the internet. How else are people talking about this? What are the baseline expectations of what it means to build a champions program and what benefits people get from them? So the way that I'm defining a champions program here or an ambassadors or heroes program is that it's a program designed to create a closer connection with product users and with the goals to extend product knowledge, improve brand recognition, and ultimately drive sales because people can do more, understand more, and are more empowered with your product. Generally, it's a long-term partnership. Oftentimes it's a year, sometimes it's five years, sometimes it's a lifetime. Once people start, they're there forever. And it has to be give and get. So both external product users and internal teams give value and get value. These programs must be mutually beneficial. And there are so many to admire, right? There are the heroes at AWS, there are MVPs at Microsoft, there's Asana Together at Asana, Trailblazers at Salesforce, the Figma community, so many. I totally invite you to shout out the ones that you love most, and we'd love to highlight them too. Vale la pena. Is it worth it, right? So why is a Champions program worth building? Here are some of our reasons. There were times, we'll say in the then years, right, where it was a top-down decision-making, most decisions were made maybe from a small group of people, maybe perhaps over a dinner or on a golf course, or some of those are tropes and cliches, but it was a small group of people making decisions that then affected larger organizations. There was a sales-led and marketing-led business model um, about qualified leads coming from those places or those teams generating those leads and product roadmaps were reverse engineered for market trends. So it would be, you know, we're gonna set our roadmap for a year, we're gonna deliver at the end of that year, there's not as much agile or fast iteration. And then if those roadmap items worked well, great. And if they didn't, there wasn't a quick iteration process and you had to go back to the drawing board after investing all of those resources. Now it is so different, right? Tech savvy users are finding, adopting and sharing the best solutions with their networks wherever they feel like meeting with those networks. 
Maybe it's on Twitter, maybe it's on LinkedIn, maybe it's on forums like discourse or open public forums like uh, Hacker News and Slack and Reddit. Um, so it could be anywhere that the people are interacting with each other. And that creates this kind of grassroots bottoms up adoption that doesn't necessarily mean those decisions for adoption for adopting a product are only happening in those small groups at the top. So it's based on peer recommendations. It's based on this PLG product led growth motion where you can try it before you buy it, freemium plans, self serve. There are all these different ways that are allowing people to understand why a product is great, how it would fit into their workflows, how it would benefit their work and ultimately their goals on delivering to their companies. Um, there's a relentless focus on uh, users and user generated content, help content that you might see on YouTube or that you might post somewhere for others to access and be able to build off those product learnings that you've already made. And then teams are building better products, iterating faster with feedback, direct feedback, because of their direct access to community members. Those community members, a lot of one, them that become your champions, become your ambassadors, or also become your most trusted source to be another voice of the community that's external from your internal teams to help you see your product and some of those like roadmap issues or feature requests in a different way based on how your customers and your community is wanting to use them. So in real life, do we have any data to prove this? We do. This data is based on cohort analyses with um, certain customers that have both their product usage data and their CRMs connected so that we can go ahead and make sure that we're looking at the right trends and patterns across that whole end to end user journey. And, and of course, they have their community channels connected as well. So what are a few top level things that we've seen emerge from champions or ambassador programs? One, we saw that orgs that invested in community programming accelerated their revenue growth and ambassadors accelerate that even more. A lot of these times it's because ambassadors are helping, um, they're helping educate people by, you know, local, locally run user groups or locally run meetups or just extending the idea that product empowerment um, amplification of product best practices, whether or not it's through blog posts or through videos or by hosting meetups virtually or in person, they really get to empower and elevate others to be able to onboard with those features and use them best. We also saw, saw that organizations that invest in ambassador programs are over three times average recurring revenue than those without. So we really see that once these ambassador programs or champions programs uh, take hold, they're really enabling others to like supercharge that product adoption, feature adoption, and get over that hump of saying, you know what, I do find value in this so much so that I, I, I want to pay for the value that it gives me. And then lastly, we do see that community events work. So we saw that ambassadors who attend an event adopt new features faster and they can amplify them faster. All right, so let's get real. What were we here for? We were here to talk about how we seeded our champions program or ambassador program at Common Room. Um, so how do I begin a program? How do I begin? How do I implement those first steps to seeding a champions program? Well, step one, you want to align your goals internally. We'll talk about how we did that. Step two, you want to set the bar, right? Create the criteria that makes sense for you and your community and your company and your members at that time. Three, apply that criteria to finding your champions. Four, start the conversation with those potential champions. And then five, trust yourself. You know your community best. So let's talk about how we did it with our uncommon community in Common Room. One, we wanted to align our goals internally. So we connected with our marketing teams, right? The community team, the customer voice, customer success team, and the education team. There's just a few of us, so it was pretty quick to connect, but we wanted to make sure that we were both giving and getting value across all of our functions and delivering value to our members themselves. We also wanted to connect with product, right? This is no light lift for them. We want to invite them in, right, and say, hey, can we share our product roadmap with our community champions or our future ambassadors? Um, are we okay giving the time and the space of saying, hey, we're hearing this from our community. How can we how can we reconfigure where our product roadmap was based on what we're hearing? Do we have that flexibility and agility right now? And how do we build it in? And then our growth teams, right? Depending and based on who would like to help us uh, or who would like to join our ambassador or champions program. How might we connect them with the growth team to make sure that we're supercharging each other's work as best as possible? Number two, we wanted to set the bar, right? So what was our criteria? 
well, we wanted to look for top community contributors. So people who were um, actively participating in the community, replying to others' posts, um, helping amplify others' work, um, delivering like valuable information in terms of maybe they're sharing their own expertise, their own uh, challenges, ways that they've addressed things with their stakeholders, participating in events, all sorts of ways that they're contributing back to the community. Here we wanted to specifically look at those who are doing that in Slack, because for us in the Uncommon community right now, all of our day to day conversations are happening most often in Slack, and that's where the most depth of exchange is happening. So whether or not people have direct product feedback, community strategy questions, high level community um, uh, strategic or, or advice that they want to share that they've learned over their time, that's mostly where those conversations are happening. So we wanted to focus specifically in Slack. Then we wanted to make sure they were an active product user. So we have a lot of folks in the Uncommon community who are incredible community builders, but at the moment might not be using Common Room, our product, in order to impact what they're doing in their community yet. And so right now we wanna make sure that it's someone who is an active product user, someone who is like, you know what, I use Common Room, I understand how that's directly mapping to my goals for my community. And now I have feedback about how to do this even better in the product so that they that way they can uh, educatedly, based on where we're trying to go as well with our product, help us understand what community managers need who are also open and willing to give that product feedback. And then we want their impact to be over 100 points. So you'll see this when I give our uh, my quick demo. Um, but we wanted to make sure that the community impact was at least at 100 points or above so that we could um, prioritize the top of the top community contributors and those who are contributing across community spaces. Um, so number three, three, we want to find our champions. More on this in a minute. Essentially, how do we apply the criteria from number two, the bar that we set, to then find our champions? Then four, start the conversation. Same, more on that in a minute. I'll, uh, I'll let you know just shortly. And then five, trust yourself. You know, go ahead and look at um, who comes out of that, of that finding your champion exercise and then understand, hey, is there someone I'm missing? Is there a channel that I should be considering somewhere let's say on youtube where this person is doing incredible work but they're just not active in my slack community and if that's the case then make sure that you include them as well so that their voice is also heard and you can still meet them and acknowledge their work based on where they want to be doing that work show us though so it is demo time ish instead of taking us through a live demo um, and trying to switch screens i will be showing you screenshots of what you can see in the product and then how you can set this up yourself in common room so we'll look at the member surface the segment surface the reporting surface workflows and team alert surfaces okay so the first thing that i that you should know is you are looking at a uh, a real uh real data but it's um obfuscated or randomized and anonymized so you'll see like um actually data taken from our uncommon community since that's what this is focused on um but we've randomized it and anonymized it so you'll see pied piper and you'll see names and data has changed that being said how do we find our members so if you look here we added our source which was specifically focused on slack because that's where our community um, conversations are happening on the daily. Then we set member tags to contributors. So these are people that are replying and responding to other people's threads and threads that they did not originate themselves, but are instead jumping into to offer their expertise. Then we set the number of communities are uh, the number they have to be using our product, common room product. Um, at least to one. So maybe some people are using Common Room across multiple of their communities if they have if they're hosts of multiple communities, but they have to be using Common Room to run at least one of their communities. So that was a criteria we set here. And then as you can see, we looked at impact points and we sorted it by impact points. So I said, show me impact points from highest to lowest. So that way we could surface people who are having the deepest amount of impact point, the deepest amount of impact. And the way that we measure this in common room is we basically give weight to different things that people can do within different services. So on Slack, for example, your uh, a post, an original post would have more impact or more weight than emoji reaction. Um, so that's how we uh, a high level view of how we look at impact points. And so by waiting, I wanted to make sure that we could see um, people with the most impact at the top. 
So then we selected um, the top 15 folks um, by setting all those criteria and we sent them to a segment. So to go back here really quick, I clicked on add to segment and I had already created a segment or if you need to at the time, once you click on add to segment, you can also name the segment and then immediately send people to a segment if you don't have a segment already created. So then I sent them to a segment called Community Advocacy Board Invitees, right? And what I wanted to do here is be able to say, okay, amazing. I'm really glad that these 15 people match all of our criteria. Now, how do I make sure to invite my champions, right? Start the conversation. So what you can, if you are on Slack or Discord, what you can do is you can actually send a bulk message. So what we're able to do here is, of course, you can go in and find each of the email accounts associated with your members or you can go ahead you can click this button here and then you can send a bulk message or bulk dm so basically you can say hey um at george hogg thank you all thank you so much we're starting this uh to seed a community advocacy board program and we'd love for you to be a pioneer in it with us we want to pilot out what this means, pilot out what's most valuable to you, make sure that we build a program that's both give and get with our internal uh, teams and our external community members just like you. And here are a few things like, you know, we'll meet monthly and um, and we'd love to send you some thank you swag and we'd love to give you some sneak peeks into what we're thinking about in the product so you can help shape and influence the future of the product. So then you can send that bulk message and then you can track statuses along the way. Right, you can say hey waiting for response or you know reached out or yes who replied yes who replied not right now. And then then what you can do is you could say okay i'm still waiting for response, you can just click on the status of waiting for response and send another bulk DM and say hey wasn't sure if you saw my message was just curious to check in if you'd be interested in piloting this Community advocacy board with us. So that's the segment, then what's next well you can create uh, workflows. Um, that allow you to message a cohort of users or people within a segment. And so here, basically what I wanted to do is say, all right, so anyone who's in the segment of community advocacy board invitees, we started um, the bar, we set the bar at 100 impact points or more, right? So now I wanna make sure that people are automatically acknowledged and recognized when they get to another threshold of impact points. So let's say I could say anytime someone from my community advocacy board um, and in that segment ends up hitting 500 uh, impact points, send them a message, right? Say, thank you so much. Automatically send them a message that says, thank you so much for how much you're contributing to the community. Um, I'd love to have a 30 minute session with you, or I'd love to shout you out on social media. Um, I'd love to highlight you in a next partner event. Um, or you could do something as simple as, hey, here's a link to um, something uh, that's really important to you, right? Um, maybe it's a nonprofit that you, that you know you both support, or maybe it's a cause that you know you both support, or maybe it's a link to swag and you say, want to send you something special, a little different now that you've reached this milestone in being a community advocacy board member and a total leader and contributor in our community. So you can set up that type of automation with workflows and make sure that community advocacy board members, your, your pre-champions, your pre-ambassadors, continually get those recognition moments along those milestones. What else you can do? So you can also make sure that those members, those special members are fully seen and heard. So you could set up a team alert, right? You can say, hey, anytime there's new activity anywhere in my community connected sources, my Slack, my Twitter, my YouTube, my LinkedIn, um, whether or not it's on Reddit or Stack Overflow, you could say, anytime I see new activity, from someone that's a community advocacy board member or invitee from someone in this segment and that has negative sentiment to immediately send a message to my internal slack feedback channel i want that channel to go bold i want to make sure that i know exactly what people are saying especially people who are so close to us that they're helping really champion and grow our our community and our product space so send that send that alert immediately in real time to my internal feedback channel so i can make sure to triage and prioritize and check in with that community member and make sure they have everything they need 
and then reporting. So you can actually filter um, to your segment. So let's say you want to say, I only want to see how people in my community advocacy board meetings, these pre ambassadors, these pre champions, this nurture program, the seedling program of my community advocacy board members, how they are doing right in the community versus the community at large. So you can start to look at and compare do people who are champions of this, right? Um, who's the most active member? What is their response rate? How might we involve them more, right? How might we um, enable them to take more activities? Um, how can we make sure to maybe distribute that regionally? How might we invite more people in different regions um, and nurture them to be community advocates, ambassadors, and champions? And you can compare that to what's happening in the community at large to see how your work by nurturing and investing in your pre-community champions, your ambassadors, and your advocacy board members pays off over time and puts that investment back into the larger community as a whole. You can also do this by topic. So you can under reporting, check out topics specifically and say, show me the topics that are most important to these community advocacy board members. That way you can track trends over time and make sure that you're addressing topics that are really, really impactful and important to the people who are sort of representing the voice of your community at large. So we had our first few meetings ourselves based on this criteria that we set and our invitees and those who join the community advocacy board process. And we learned a few things, right? Uh, I think it's always better to be vocally self-constructive about how we can get better. And we always are asking our community um, advocacy board members, hey, is this the right cadence for you? Is this the right content for you? Um, we wanna make sure that we're both giving and getting value as best as we can. So three things that we learned were we need to hit a better balance, right? There are a few notable product champions who we should have asked to join the conversation um, who aren't necessarily always super active in Slack. Um, we need to make more concrete asks to really set our community advocacy board members up for success when they walk into the meeting. And so we can get them to sign up, which is so great, right? But then they walk into the meeting and I drop a question like, hey, what's like the most impactful way that you've used Common Room in the last month to build a program with your community? And honestly, that's a bit of a meaty question and probably takes a little bit of time. And so instead of um, just asking people to show up, I can do some pre-work as a community host, right? And as a host of the community advocacy board meeting to say three days in advance, five days in advance, hey, I see that you use team alerts in the product really, really well. As a community manager and someone who is a leader in this community advocacy board, will you show us live and in, in front of the rest of the board members how you use team alerts and why you set them up the way you do? Or, hey, what are the last three segments that you've created and why did you create them? What programs are you trying to build and focus on today? Or, hey, you sent an automated survey directly from or directly to your community recently. Can you tell us about why you chose that survey? What were the results and what outcomes you will take because of that survey? How did you set it up so that your the survey answers feed back into your community programs, whether or not you set up that survey so it feeds back into another segment that allows you to build more programs and initiatives based on that segment or cohort of users who is interested in that specific topic of the survey depending on how they answered it. And then finally, number three, hold more space for education. So we also know that our product is constantly evolving, constantly improving based on community feedback. And even our daily users and ourselves have more to learn and teach each other, both in terms of community strategy and where we can push community to go in terms of both delivering to our members and driving that business impact, but then also performing those actions and how to best set up those actions for success using Common Room. So that is it from me. Thank you so very much for walking through me, walking with me through this journey. It was really, really fun to be able to present this both at the community roundtable last year, live to other fellow community managers, as well as to um, developer relations and developer advocacy leaders at DevRelCon last year. There are so many ways that people are building incredible programs for their community. And I really hope that you're able to feel a little less concerned about the manual tasks of how to seed a future champions ambassador or advocacy program, and that you can instead use Common Room to empower that work so you can focus on, those, on the people within those programs and helping uplift and elevate how they use your product to find the success um, value and hit the goals that they want when they work with you.
Thanks so much. I'll see you on the other side. And if you'd like to ask any questions, I am always in the Uncommon community and you can join our Slack and you can find out more information and more community resources, connect with 1500 more community and DevRel leaders at www.commonroom.io slash uncommon. See you on the other side.